up so quickly that the material doesn't get presented, but all we have in this section is a bit of notation. So yesterday we introduced the idea of a Riemann sum. And when you have a Riemann sum, you're adding a bunch of stuff together. Yesterday we had four rectangles, but maybe you have 10 rectangles or a thousand rectangles. And at some point, just writing all of those thousand uh, areas connected by plus signs is going to be a uh, pretty, pretty unfeasible. So we need a way to add a bunch of stuff together quickly. And in particular, we're going to introduce this notation called either summation, or if you want to be a little fancy about it, sigma notation. Um, sigma notation, I'm just going to put it on the board and then we'll discuss it. So that's the Greek letter sigma, hence the name. Down here, I'll write I equals, let me put one for now. And up here, I'm going to put an N. And over here, we're going to have I in some capacity. This notation is telling us to add a bunch of stuff together. It's giving us a starting point and it's giving us an ending point. And you see I appears twice here. And we're going to be replacing I with whole numbers, with integers. We're going to start down here I equals one, and we're going to replace I with one. Then we're going to replace I with two. Then we're going to replace I with three. And as we make all of these replacements, we're pumping up from one to N. And when we get to N, when we replace I with N, we stop. Now this notation is possibly a bit cryptic, but I always think an example verifies everything. Let's go from I equals one to four. And let's have that on the right of the sigma, I squared. So, we start with one and we replace I with one to get one squared. 
Then we count up. We replace I with two. We replace I with three. We replace I with four. And that four is our stopping condition. So once we've replaced I with four, we stop. And this then is whatever it is. One plus four plus nine plus 16. 16 plus four is 20 is a 20. Nine plus one is 10. I make that 30. And once we understand this notation, we can tweak it a little. Like, what if, what if I wrote to this now, the sum from I equals three to five of the square root of I. This is obviously a little different from what we had on the previous frame because we have I equals three on the bottom instead of I equals one. But if you understand this bottom number to represent the start, and this top number to represent the stop. Okay, instead of starting with one, we start with three. And then we count up. Four, five. And once we get to five, we stop because five is our um, stopping condition. Um, in particular, something you see a lot is sums that start with zero instead of one. That's a fairly common situation. but we can deal with it. Again, if we just think of the bottom number as the start, the top number as the stop, we replace I with zero to start with, and then we count up. We replace I with one, we replace I with two. We replace I with three. And now three is our stopping condition. So we stop. And this is uh, whatever it is. Is two times zero is zero, plus one is one, three, two times two plus one is five, two times three plus one is seven. If my mental arithmetic game is on point, that should be 16. Because this sigma notation is just stuff added together, it has some properties. Um, probably the property we really care about the most is the statement that we'll start I from one, just because 
I have to start from somewhere, but this property holds if I start from zero or anywhere else. Let's write, actually, before I do that, let's look at a summation that looks a little different. Instead of having I as um, the input of a function, we have I as a subscript. This is what we're going to see when we take this material and use it to look at Riemann subs. Well, the fact that I is a subscript doesn't change anything. You replace I with one, with whatever you have down here, but in this case, that's one. And then you start counting up until you reach N, that stopping condition, and then you stop. So, uh, does anybody, I should pause, does anybody have questions about any of this? I, for whatever reason, the, the one time I can clearly remember going to the tutoring in calculus, it was because I, found this summation notation very confusing, looking back and not sure what, what the problem was. But anyway, suppose you have a constant in this sum. So you have this A sub I term, but it's being multiplied by this constant K. Then that constant can be pulled out of the summation. And it might look like we're doing something fancy here, but we really aren't. We're just using elementary properties of addition that we've all known since we were small. Like say we could have I going from one to three times two and two A sub I. Well, that's two A sub one, two A sub two, two A sub three. And we can pull that two out. And this A sub one plus A sub two plus A sub three is the sum from one to three of A sub I. So <laughs> we were able to pull that two out of the sum, just like we said we'd be able to do. That's virtually all there is to this section, but let's connect it back to the previous section. Let's connect this back to Riemann sums. So we have an interval. We have a function f of x. And we're trying to approximate the area under this interval. 
So we start by breaking this interval into however many pieces. And let's call these marks I've made on the whiteboard. This first mark I'll call X sub zero. And then I'll just count up to X sub five. Mm -hmm. I could have used more rectangles or fewer rectangles in this particular example. I used five. Then in each of these pieces, we're going to select a value and we're going to use that value to create a rectangle. We traditionally name this value as it were after the left hand um, bound of this interval. That is to say this value we selected is between X sub two and X sub three. We name it X sub two star. Now to, for a Riemann sum, we want the area of this rectangle. The area is the base times the height. The base we're going to give its own notation. Let me get that out of the way. The length of the base in these Riemann sums is always going to be written delta. And just like this X sub two star, you see this X sub two here. This is the interval between X sub two and X sub three. And we sort of name it after the left hand end point. The area of this rectangle is therefore the height times the base. The height is F of X sub two star. The base is delta X sub two. And that is, that is the area of this rectangle. And it's one of the terms in the Riemann sum. And to form this Riemann sum, you then repeat this process with each of these little sub intervals. So here we select the point, we create a rectangle. This width is going to be delta X sub three. Yeah. And we're going to get a term that looks like this. This point we selected to create this rectangle, where once again, giving a name like that, X sub three star. So the height is F of X sub three. 
Is it obvious to everyone, by the way? I mean, the base is just what I've decided to name the base that. But is it obvious where this height is coming from? It's because this is y equals zero. And this is y equals f of x. So we're starting at zero and going up to f of x. So the height, this function is providing the height. We start at zero, we go up to f of x sub three star. And now we repeat this process three more times, right? We've got three, we've got a little, we select a point here, we go up, we create a rectangle, we find the area of the rectangle. It's going to be that. We select a point in that interval. We use it to create a rectangle. We find the area. Sorry, even as I start to use it, that yellow might be kind of hard to see, but it's f of x sub one star times delta x sub one. Finally, select the little point there. Don't want to use that color. I've already used it. Select the little point there. Create this rectangle, f of x sub zero star, delta x sub zero. And then the remock, come on, zoom, don't do this. The remon sum is gotten by taking all of those terms and adding them up. Well, that would be a pretty cumbersome thing to write. But using this sigma notation, it's not cumbersome at all. These terms we're adding, all have the same form, f of x something star times delta x something. And these subscripts are running from one to four. Zero to four. Thank you for catching that. You are exactly correct. So there's a Riemann sum written using this um, summation notation. And um, that's all there is for this section. It would clearly be madness to start the next one uh, with the break and everything. And I was never planning to. I mean, for my online students, it hasn't been posted. So even if it was quite a short lecture today, we'll call it. I hope you all have uh, a pleasant Thanksgiving and I will see you next week.